Shane, All right. Miles Sanders has six touchdowns rushing this year. Didn't have any last year. Is there something different there that he's doing? Or no, I mean he's running hard. I, I think he's finding his way in the end zone. A couple of those that pop for big ones. He had the one um, against Pittsburgh that was awesome, and then he's finding his way uh, inside the ten yard line, getting in there, and uh, he's doing a heck of a job. He's been doing a great job all year and seeing the holes and great vision. So. I think it's just turning out that way this year that he's scoring touchdowns. It's been good. It seems like on a few of those runs last week, he was running pretty angry, oh, yeah. looking for contact. Is that what you saw, and what does that do for the whole team? What yeah, no, I think anytime you you bring that mentality of I'm going to run you over uh, at any point, uh, I think it brings a great deal of um, you know intensity to our football team. And the one he had where he bounced out the corner and stiff armed the guy right on the sidelines, uh, it, it brought some intensity to our sidelines, and guys feed off that. Off, off those things. Jones' average uh, carries per game has dropped the last three weeks. He's still on <laughs> pace to set an NFL record. But is that a byproduct of the way defenses are playing him, or are you guys trying to maybe kind of take a little off? I think it's week by week basis, just looking at what we're seeing defensively. Um, but obviously, Jalen's a heck of a runner, and when we when we need to use him as a runner, uh, we do we do do that. And like you said, he's on pace to have a lot of rushing yards this year, uh, and we're going to continue to look at those things every week with him. But as a, as a quarterback, kind of. Uh, it gains more of an understanding of the, of the passing game and, and develops in that way. Yeah. Isn't like running less going to be a product of that? And do you see that? Yeah, I think, like I said, it's game by game. But obviously, uh, it, it does help when you're throwing it the way he's throwing it uh, and being able to see it. I mean, the way we're throwing it right now has been pretty good. I mean, we're play action, we're drop back, uh, doing a lot of different things with him. Uh, and I think the more the more and more you play and the more and more you see. Uh, you're going to become a better player, and that's what's happening with him right now. Uh, and it's continued to show up. And I know we got a lot of football left. We're only eight games in. We got nine left in the regular season. Um, but we kind of we want to keep continue, uh, seeing that growth with him every week. Jay, do you see do you see uh, Dallas right now approaching the class of a Kittle and a Kelsey? There's no question about it. Uh, Dallas is one of the premier tight ends in this league right now. Uh, he continues to show it week in and week out, uh, what he does on the field. Uh, it starts in the meeting rooms. It starts on the practice field, uh, the way he takes care of his body to get ready for football games uh, and the way he mentally prepares for football games. And then just his strength and size and his quickness uh, and his play strength, uh, it's in, at the top of the league right now without a question. As a follow-up on, uh, on Dallas, if you look at his catch percentage, is that what you'd expect for the way he's used in his offense, or is that even exceeding expectations? No, I think so. I think when you have the guys we have on the outside, we talk about this, we start to start a season just spreading the love around all these guys, and it could be game by game. And last week it was Dallas's game. You know, he had eight for 100 yards uh, and the touchdown. Um, and I think we look at that every week and we try to get those guys uh, the ball. And sometimes it'll dictate where the ball goes. The coverage uh, will dictate that. Uh, and last week we saw some things on tape. Uh, that we were able to take advantage of, and Jalen made great throws, and he ran great routes. Hey, Shane, uh, Nick, uh, Nick talked a lot about the Washington front the first yeah. time you guys played. Chase Young might be back this week, uh, Monday night, next week. Uh, is this the best front? You're, you, you're yeah, they're out. really good. Uh, I think it starts up front, obviously, with Allen, Payne, uh, Sweat, and then obviously if Chase Young comes back. I mean, it's a really good group. Um, they're, they're very powerful inside. Uh, they they got good play strength up front. Uh, they're good against the run, and they can rush the passer. Um, so I think with any football team, it starts up front with offensive, defensive lines, and, it, and that's how they set the tone uh, defensively is with their defensive line. Uh, and the good thing is we got a great offensive line uh, to counter that that we feel good about too. And we know it's going to be a heck of a challenge uh, every week, especially when you're playing a division opponent. You get to play them twice a year, so they know about us. We know about them. Um, but it's a, it's a challenge that we're looking forward to. Has Jalen exceeded like the expectations you had for him as a passer this year, or did you kind of see this big of a jump? Coming? No, I saw it coming. I, like I said, it, it started it started in the uh, towards the end of last year. You saw the pro progression going up, and then you saw it through training camp, uh, and then you saw it uh, starting the season. And then, like I said, the more you play and the more you see, I think at any position, you're going to grow as a football player, uh, and that's what he's doing. And the guys that play a long time and those guys, the quarterbacks that have played a long time and have seen the game for a long time, they've seen so many different looks. So when they see it, you know, it might pop up in a situation that wasn't on tape and those guys get back to it and they're like, oh, shoot, I saw that a couple years ago. It's the same look from so-and-so when he was defense coordinator or wherever. And I think that's starting to happen with him. You know, obviously year two as a full-time starter, uh, just seeing the different looks and the way he goes about studying tape, 
uh, week in and week out and getting prepared for games. Uh, I think that's what sets him apart uh, is his preparation. Is there a specific play that, that sort of stands out that exemplifies that where maybe he, he wouldn't have seen it last year, but this year he did? Uh, I, w- I, w- I don't want to say a specific one, but there's a few ones, just some, some checks he's made at the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, some man zone stuff. I mean, we talked about the Arizona one, that big third down play he made to Dallas, and then the touchdown play against Washington the first time we played him. Uh, there's multiple things that he's done this year uh, that shows the, you know, the great growth of, of young quarterbacks becoming really good players. This past game, Jalen was very good against cover two, he's yeah. very good against the Blitz. Those might have been areas before where he, uh, he struggled, at least in terms of numbers go but what's that do for your offense when they you know may not be able to kind of lean on that anymore yeah no I think that's it's the ultimate you know game of chess when you're playing uh the quarterback position and you're looking at different things and they're playing different coverages and trying to disguise things but it's knowing where to go with the football and when to go with the football you know, and using your eyes, using your feet, you know, to man- manipulate defenders. Uh, and that's what he's doing right now. And uh, when you can do that, you're going to have success. And uh, we got to keep that going. Devontae's numbers are down like, the last four or five weeks. I think he's averaging under 40 yards the last five games. Uh, obviously, you have A.J. in Dallas. But how's he handled that? And, um, yeah, you know, what, what do you see from him? Yeah, no, he's been great. He's selfless. He knows that his time's going to come around again, you know. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's an ultimate team game. Uh, and we're, we're in it to win football games, and those guys know that it's going to come around to them. Uh, whether it could be this week, it might be next week, we don't know. But uh, those guys understand that, uh, that we're trying to win, and when it's their time to get the ball, they're going to make plays. Is there ever an element of let's get Devontae involved, like kind of going into it, let's just try to get him established here? Yeah, I think that every game we go into that, you know, we think about certain players and getting them going early and wh- how the game's going, and, and I think that that will be dictated uh, week by week. You mentioned – Spreading the love to guys like Goddard and some of the others, but you know Jack Stoll will never get that level of love, I'm sure. But has there been? It seems like he gets a you know big yeah. catch every game lately here. I mean, is there more of a conscious effort to get? I think that kind of naturally happens organically. To be honest with you, like some of those, we had that one. It was second and eight, and he caught the you know the little corner stop uh, that we threw to him. Um, it just happened that way. But yeah, we, we have plays in for Jack. I mean, does he get a ton of catches? No, but uh, when he does, he makes the most of them. He said he's worked in the off season. And- Running rounds and yeah. catching. I mean, do you notice that difference? In There's no question. Way? The way he's coming in and out of breaks, uh, it's been tremendous. And Coach Michael does a heck of a job with those guys, you know, an individual period, getting those guys ready, uh, how to start uh, and get in and out of breaks and use his hands at the top of routes and all those different things. But uh, it's been good to see. A couple more. Red zone offense, what goes into that? Who's, uh, who's behind that? What meetings are allocated to red zone? And yeah. what's the backstory there? Uh, we sit in there as a group. Uh, it's a group effort in there. We're all in there, all the skill coaches, Stout, everyone's in there. Uh, the whole offense is in there. We go through our red zone plan, uh, and we look at it uh, from top to bottom, from the high red zone down into the tight red zone, uh, and look at our run, run pass plan there. And then we go from there and look at all the third downs, what they're doing third down defensively. Uh, and then we always got to you know, have a plan on how we think defenses are going to play us uh, compared to how they play other teams too as well. Okay, we talk about the, the arm and the legs of Jalen. His ball handling skills really look like they're exceptional. As far as ball handling, oh, when he's carrying the football? Yeah. Yeah, there's no question. I, I think that's a big process that we talk about uh, week in and week out. As you guys know, we talk about ball security as one of our keys to victory and win the turnover battle and win the explosive play battle. But taking care of the football is huge. And the fundamental part of it, uh, it's talked about a lot. Uh, and not only is it talked about, we got to go rep it in practice because if you just talk about it, it doesn't mean anything. But you got to preach it every day and you got to go do it on the practice field. And he's very cautious of that uh, in the ball handling. We work on it before practice, during practice, and then we come back in the meetings. It's always talked about uh, on taking care of the football. With the two fumbles last week, was there anything fundamentally to clean up? Yeah, I mean, the one, he got hit from the back. He didn't see the guy. You know, that was a tough look for him, you know, and that and sometimes that happens at the quarterback's position, especially when you're, you know, going this way and the guy's coming from blind side and you're going to throw it and the ball's up. You know, those are the tough ones. But obviously, if you can see that guy, you want to have two hands of the football at all times when you're in the pocket, and sometimes that happens, and that was, that was a tough one for him. You kind of piggyback off the, the red zone question. Just from when you and Nick and, and this staff got together and got here, how much – have you guys evolved when it comes to the game planning process? Obviously not specifics, but uh, have, has it always been the same? Has it changed? Yeah, no, it's definitely evolved. I think as coaches and as players, you're always trying to evolve and see what the next best thing is out there to put your guys in position to make plays. And, uh, I mean, there's stuff that we 
carryover that we've seen that's new. Uh, we have went back in the archives and looked at certain things uh, that we feel that will give us the best chance to win. Uh, and obviously it's dictated on what they're doing defensively down there. That dictates our game plan, uh, what the defense is doing with all, all situations, whether it's first, second down, third down, or red zone. Uh, we're trying to attack what the defense is doing and put our guys in position to make plays. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys.